Yes, I would like to officially welcome you to the MOSC 2021 Congress. Regretfully, original plan was to have a WASC 2020 Congress on site in Moscow. It turned out to be WASC 2021 Congress online a year later. Now, uh, before we start, I would like to uh, thank everybody who, who participated and put your energy to the Congress. Especially, I would like to uh, extra point Professor Raul Espejo, President of and Professor Vladimir Lepsky uh, from the Institute of Philosophy, Russian Academy of Science. And I would uh, give the words to Professor Vladimir. Vladimir Yevgenievich, you want to Oh. Uh, Igor, introduction, да? Yes. А привет, самое, Ачирова, Александра, старт. So, uh, Vladimir, are you going to introduce uh, Professor Achirova? Achirova, Alexandra Achirova. I'm ready. <laughs> you are ready. Um, Vladimir, okay. can you please uh, Alexandra Achirova, she is a uh, goodwill uh, ambassador uh, UNESCO. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, uh, Professor Chirova, can you maybe share the screen? Yeah. Okay. I, I prefer to use my mother in language, Russian. Uh, uh, Elena, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Elena Malakhova, uh, help uh, Alexandra Chirova with translate. Yes, uh, dear, dear was participants, uh, I will be helping with the translation from Russian into English when it will be needed. So I will have to sometimes step in. Уважаемые участники Конгресса, я искренне рада приветствовать вас с началом конференции и приветствовать всех представителей, участвующих в ней, различных отраслей знания, новейших технологий, научной дипломатии, собравшихся сегодня для обсуждения важных тем управления и развития современного и будущего существования мира. Я, наверное, буду переводить по фразам, чтобы иметь возможность перевести. Dear WOSC participants, I'm glad to greet and congratulate you with um, all um, our <laughs> very dear, with all our interesting topics on uh, scientific diplomacy, on uh, the uh, on the technical uh, field. Uh, so um, um, I think uh, our participant will continue. Большой, большой, большая просьба. Можно чуть покороче фразами, потому что я не успеваю перевести. Вы переводите хорошо. Хорошо известно, что наука – это стратегический ресурс человечества. It's very well known that science is a strategic resource of humanity. И каждый раз новые знания, а вслед за ним и новое понимание мира всегда естественным образом были связаны с внутренним миром человека. And every time... Uh... The uh, um, development of knowledge uh, was uh, really um, very closely connected with uh, the human worldview and human inner, inner understanding of the world. Встает вопрос сегодня очень актуальный: насколько соответствует сегодня природа современного человека миру? And we've got a very um, 
interesting and very fundamental uh, and up-to-date question, how the uh, human uh, nature, uh, how the human nature um, develops, it develops itself in accordance to uh, the uh, scientific and technical development of our modern world. Достаточно ли сегодня существующий миропорядок и человеческий ресурс для определения и реализации базовых возможностей развития и управления миром? Do we have enough resources? Do we have enough basic human resources for the effective effective development and effective control of our modern, uh, fast uh, developing world and society. Мир, который развивается сегодня почти бесконтрольно и в ущерб человеку и человечеству. Because our world is uh, developing very fast and sometimes without control and sometimes uh, can damage uh, the um, basic uh, human um, values. Разрушается природа общества, ломается внутренний мир человека. This can be a danger of the destruction of basic social structure and basic basic structures essential for the development of humanity. Мир стал опасен для жизни и на востоке, и на западе. The world um, is even uh, the world can even become a quite dangerous place to live, uh, both uh, in the east and in the west. Я хочу напомнить, что возникновение доктрин древних мыслителей всегда было концептуально категориальным представлением о природе человека. And uh, I want to remind you that um, the doctrines even of the uh, thinkers of the past. Um, always developed uh, in, in, in accordance uh, with uh, the basic uh, needs and basic structures of uh, the uh, human development. И в человеческой истории эти представления упорядочили структуры реальности вещей, общества, сущности человека и формировали культурные и научные наследия. And uh, throughout the history of humanity, these structures of, of thought uh, gave uh, the potential of uh, bringing order to uh, our knowledge about ourselves and about the world in general. К сожалению, современное планетарное сознание не удержало выработанные в античные меры, направленные к человеку. Um, it's uh, it's a pity that uh, our worldview that um, we are sharing nowadays, uh, mostly throughout the planet, uh, um, lo lost uh, this uh, basic holistic structure of the understanding of reality. И сегодня, как никогда, ощущается востребованность такого сознания и формирование общих согласованных и системных целеполаганий. This is why we have this is why we have the need to develop this basic holistic worldview of for for the humanity as a whole to be understood in our very fast developing world and society. И во единый мир требует безусловно единых решений. Because the United World, of course, have of course has to develop some unified decision-making structures. Формирование такого сознания является одной из главных задач ЮНЕСКО. And forming this unified conscience, this unified worldview. Uh, is one of the main goals of the UNESCO. And uh, this goal is, is a very difficult one. Because uh, nowadays uh, it's a pity that modern humanity um, has no mechanisms for, for, um, for achieving uh, 
these uh, goals that um, <sighs> that can uh, unite this humanity. И выработка стратегических основ развития на сегодняшний день является поисковой задачей, которая в мире решается, к сожалению, фрагментарно. Working out these strategic decision-making structures and goal-setting structures is a task that is being solved only in some fragments uh, in our modern world. Многие из вас в своих публикациях уже обращали внимание на то, что технологические и экономические приоритеты важны, но явно недостаточны для устойчивости и безопасности развития. Um, in your uh, respective, respective publications, um, many, uh, many of the participants um, have already noted that uh, Economical and technical development is a very important and good thing, but it's not enough for the strategic development of humanity. И поэтому главная поисковая задача – это нахождение таких императивов развития, которые основывались бы на приоритетах гуманитарного нравственного характера. And uh, the main strategic goal is to find such uh, imperatives of development that would be based on uh, the... Uh, foundations of uh, humanism and uh, the uh, <clears throat> humanitarian uh, part of the development of our society. And first of all, it's the value of human life and uh, our modern civilization uh, really has to have a human face. И, безусловно, что такие подходы должны опираться на системные исследования междисциплинарного характера актуальных проблем и в гуманитарных, и в естественно-научных областях знания. And uh, such uh, approaches uh, should be uh, interdisciplinary uh, both for uh, the um, studies in humanities and in natural sciences. А также в современных информационных технологиях, гуманитарной кибернетике, культуре, с применением смыслов и ценностей, которые на протяжении веков удерживали структуры, определяющие идентичность народов и человечества. Our studies, uh, including humanities, including cybernetics, um, because um, this uh, systemic uh, interdisciplinary approach can uh, create and unite the structures of thought that throughout the centuries has kept humanity uh, as uh, the uh, united uh, developing civilization. Я желаю вам сегодня больших успехов в ваших дискуссиях, нахождение общих знаменателей в подходах к новому. I wish you success in your today's discussion in finding uh, something uh, that uh, will be uh, close to everyone and that will unite your uh, diverse and interesting approaches. Хотелось бы, чтобы это новое было управляемой и предсказуемой моделью мира которая uh, не может быть ничем иным, как сбережением народа человечества, а также цивилизации смысла. I hope that uh, the uh, new approaches you find will help to create uh, a uh, model of uh, the society uh, that uh, will be uh, um, able to uh, control this this diversity and to understand this diversity for uh, the uh, well-being of the humanity and for the development of our uh, civilization for the future. Большое спасибо вам uh, за эту конференцию. Берегите себя uh, и берегите мир. От вас очень много в нем зависит. И всего вам uh, хорошего. Thank you for your conference. Uh, and uh, I hope everyone will be all right because uh, the development of, uh, of the science and uh, a lot of things for development in our modern world really depends on you. So good luck to everybody. Большое спасибо за перевод.
Best wishes for all of you. Alexandra Vasilna, thank you very much. Good luck. Good luck to you. Спасибо uh, большое за priceless gift, за бесценный дар вашей информации. Не шутите так. Я не шучу. Спасибо. Я не шучу по одной простой причине, что мой товарищ будет выступать, где конечная цель будет доказана, что конечная цель человечества – это не просто демократия, а демократия – дар, дар и духовный, и материальный. Это, это правда. Я не стала превращать свое приветствие в доклад, но я очень много занимаюсь проблемами гуманитарной модернизации, гуманитарной безопасности и сбережения человечества. Хотелось бы, чтобы вы соглашались, когда я смогу пригласить вас как участников этой конференции на свои мероприятия. Большое вам спасибо. 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 Спасибо, спасибо вам. Thank you. I think, спасибо I think... всем участникам. I, I hope I hope the English uh, speaking participants understood the little conversation between professors. Uh, yes, but maybe Professor Vladimir Lepsky, it's time to uh, next speech. Uh, uh, Vladimir Viktorovich Ivanov, Deputy President, uh, Russian Academy of Sciences. Uh, he asked. Uh, read your uh, speech. Uh, Anton, uh, help me uh, with translator. Anton, please. Ah, yes. yes. Okay. Участникам 18-го конгресса ВОЗК-2021 системный подход и кибернетика, устремленные в будущее человечество. On behalf of the Russian Academy of Sciences, I welcome the participants of the 18th World Organization of Systems and Cybernetics Congress Systems Approach and Cybernetics, Engaging the Future of Mankind. Ongoing an era of global transformation. Driven by intense scientific and technological progress. При этом на первое место выходит качество жизни. Quality of life is becoming paramount. Новые технологии признаны прежде всего обеспечить развитие человека. New technologies are intended above all to ensure the development of humanity. Фактически речь идет о глобальной гуманитарной технологической революции, в результате которой сформируется новый мировой уклад. As a matter of fact, we are facing a global humanitarian technological revolution, which will bring new way of life to our world. Основой технологической базы нового мирового уклада являются цифровые технологии. Digital technologies are the foundation for this new way of life. Цифровые технологии формируют принципиально новую технологическую платформу энергетики, промышленности, здравоохранения, образования и так далее, а также новую культуру. They bring us radically new technological platform for energy, industry, healthcare, education, as well as a new culture. Сегодня без них невозможно представить социально-экономическое развитие. Social and economic development today is unimaginable without them. Одним из глобальных вызовов является формирование новой среды обитания человека, которая должна рассматриваться как система природа, технологии, информация, культура. A global challenge is the formation of a new habitat for human beings, which should be seen as a nature, technology, information, culture system. Однако наряду с очевидным прогрессом новые технологии вызывают новые риски и угрозы, ответы на которые должно найти научное сообщество. But alongside obvious progress, new technologies bring new risks and threats to which scientific community must find answers. Кроме того, особое влияние на протекающие глобальные процессы оказывает пандемия COVID-19. Moreover, the COVID-19 pandemic has a major impact on ongoing global processes. В ходе Конгресса ВОЗК-2021 будет обсужден широкий спектр вопросов, касающихся современных проблем развития цифровых технологий, искусственного интеллекта и их роли в формировании нового мирового уклада. ВОЗК-2021 Конгресс будет обсуждать широкий спектр вопросов, касающихся современных проблем развития цифровых технологий, искусственного интеллекта и их роли в формировании нового мирового уклада. Желаю участникам форума Конгресса плодотворной работы новых научных открытий 
дальнейшего укрепления научного сотрудничества. I wish the participants of the Congress fruitful work, new scientific discoveries and further consolidation of scientific cooperation. Заместитель президента РАН, член-корреспондент РАН Владимир Иванов. Deputy President of the Russian Academy of Sciences, corresponding member of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Doctor of Economics Vladimir Ivanov. Uh, uh, excuse me, now Ivanov in airplane. <laughs> This walk. Uh, next uh, uh, speech, uh, Andrei uh, Smirnov. Uh, director uh, uh, of uh, Institute of uh, Philosophy, Russian Academy of Science. Uh, he is in uh, he is uh, in a meeting uh, with uh, President Ran. Now, uh, Lena uh, Malakhova, can you help me uh, with translate? Of course. Уважаемые участники Конгресса, ВОСК-2021. Системному подходу и кибернетике философы всегда уделяли большое внимание. В Конгрессе ВОСК-2021 Институт философии – главный организатор. В Конгрессе ВОСК-2021 The Institute of Philosophy is what is uh, the main uh, organizer. Это убедительно доказывает, что возрастает роль гуманитарных наук в этой проблематике, устремленной в будущее человечества. Uh, this proves that the role of humanities, uh, humanitarian sciences, um, is uh, is becoming uh, is becoming great uh, in uh, this problematics uh, that uh, is uh, forward uh, that uh, is forwarded in human future Ещё недавно кибернетика понималась в основном как математическая дисциплина Not long ago cybernetics was thought to be uh, mostly a discipline uh, like mathematics Сегодня социальная кибернетика становится локомотивом развития кибернетики в целом But nowadays uh, there is social cybernetics that uh, is becoming a driver of uh, the development of cybernetics as a scientific branch. Определить перспективные направления системного подхода и кибернетики нельзя без анализа и прогноза смысла в жизни общества будущего. It is uh, impossible to uh, find out the perspective um, um, the perspective branches or of a system uh, approach and cybernetics without the analysis and prognosis of uh, the uh, main um, foundations of uh, the uh, social life um, of our future. And these problems are uh, mostly philosophical ones. Today, Существенное влияние на развитие кибернетики оказывает модель техногенной цивилизации. Nowadays there is a model of a technogenic civilization that uh, has a significant influence on the development of cybernetics. В этой модели базовые ценности наука и научно-технический прогресс. And in this model there are basic values of uh, science and scientific and technological progress. При этом фактически игнорируются социальные ценности. And uh, with this, unfortunately, uh, social values are uh, almost ignored. Как следствие, игнорируется социокультурное разнообразие отдельных цивилизаций. And uh, because of this, uh, the social cultural diversity of uh, particular civilizations uh, is also ignored. А это приводит к унификации цивилизаций, к цивилизационному кризису мирового сообщества. And uh, this uh, leads to uh, the uh, uh, unwanted uh, unification and uh, civilizational crisis of uh, the uh, 
of our modern world. В Институте философии Иран ведутся исследования по разработке моделей посттехногенной цивилизации. Um, in the Institute of Philosophy of Russian Academy of Sciences, um, there are um, <clears throat> there are uh, studies and researches going on uh, to uh, create uh, the model of post-technogenic civilization. В центре внимания оказываются ценностные ориентации и этические аспекты организации полисубъектных сред в условиях гибридной реальности. Um, so, um... These, uh, uh, these researchers are, are paying uh, utmost attention um, to the uh, value orientations and ethical aspects uh, of the or organization of polysubject environments um, in a <clears throat> hybrid reality. В контексте проблем цифровой трансформации, разработки и внедрения искусственного интеллекта, Особое внимание уделяется социогуманитарным основаниям критериев их оценки. Uh, in the context of uh, digital transformation, uh, the development of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, the utmost attention also is paid to the socio-humanitarian uh, foundations of the uh, criteria of uh, the evaluation of such innovations. А также философским проблемам конвергенции антологии парадигм, социальной организации и искусственного интеллекта. And also to philosophical uh, problems uh, of the ontologies and paradigms of a social organization and uh, artificial intelligence. Эти соображения позволяют сделать вывод, что философы открыты и готовы к совместным междисциплинарным и трансдисциплинарным взаимодействиям со специалистами системного подхода и кибернетики. Uh, these uh, approaches uh, show that philosophers are open and ready for uh, um, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary researches uh, together with the specialists uh, in system approach and cybernetics. Я поздравляю всех участников с началом Конгресса, актуального для многих областей гуманитарных и естественных наук, а также практики управления социальными системами. Uh, I congratulate all the participants with the beginning of this Congress, uh, important for many fields of the humanities and natural sciences, and also for the uh, control sciences in the fields of uh, the control of social systems. Желаю плодотворного обмена идеями и разработками, а также... Окей, okay. uh, I wish you to fruitfully exchange your ideas and researches. А также поиска новых форм международного сотрудничества, включая научную дипломатию в интересах гармонии и развития мирового сообщества. And I also wish you uh, to find new forms of uh, international uh, cooperation, including scientific diplomacy uh, in the interests of a harmonious uh, development of, the, uh, <clears throat> of our uh, contemporary society in, in the whole world. Director of Institute of Philosophy Iran, academic Iran, Andrei Smirnov. The director of the Institute of Philosophy of Russian Academy of Sciences, the member of Russian Academy of Sciences, Smirnov. Thank you, uh, Elena. Thank you, Lipsky, yeah. for uh, basically conveying you, the right. messages. Mm. And Elena and Anton for translating that to English. Now, let us see if. There are some words of uh, Professor Raul Espejo and Vladimir Lepsky on, and my words, on the Congress itself. Why, what's it all about? Why are we here? And for that, I would propose to start with Professor uh, Vladimir Lepsky to give the introduction to the Congress. 
Okay. Uh, uh, Igor, uh, or maybe maybe we should start with Professor Raul Espejo, uh, and and then go to Professor Vladimir Lepsky. Raul. Okay. Okay, Raul. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to share a screen. So right. Am I sharing well the screen? Yes, you are. Yes, yes. Good. Um, well, Wask is extremely happy to start uh, this uh, Congress with the Russian Academy of Sciences. This has been a significant and long process that uh, has been going on for more than a decade. We started in 2011 in Nanjing with uh, work with the a University of Nanjing in China to continue in 2014 with a, a Congress in, in Colombia in Ibagué and uh, it then go to Rome in 2017. And our plan, as you have heard, was to have a the Congress with the Russian Academy of Sciences it, precisely in 2020. However, the world tells us something different, that we are very, very happy that uh, we have managed to come together in 2021. Thanks to the great effort of uh, the Academy of Sciences, and I must mention from the beginning, the great effort of um, my colleague and friend, I Igor Perko, the Director General of WASP, uh, whose uh, effort and support to, to make this happen has been extraordinarily important to get us together today. So thanks to Igor for that. And with that, I want to proceed with uh, I want to proceed with, uh, uh, I think the aim of uh, this Congress, in, in a way, many of the talks that came before this one uh, were explaining and giving the basic direction for our work. Uh, we want to offer a platform for conversations and debates about uh, social issues. So that's uh, perhaps a, a key aspect of this Congress. Uh, and from the cyber systemic perspective, uh, and obviously reflecting upon current humanities development. Uh, it is, a, perhaps we, we, we have had several events that leading us to this Congress. It, one of those was uh, again organized by the Russian Academy of Sciences in 2019 in Moscow. Uh, and uh, uh, it was in 2019 in Moscow where we had a symposium uh, about uh, all these uh, talks about uh, what I think we would consider a self-developing, reflexive, active environment. And th th this is one of the significant contributions that Vladimir Levsky has been uh, giving to all of the cybernetic community. And my hope is that uh, through this uh, uh, Congress, we will develop these ideas even further. What is particularly interesting about uh, uh, these uh, self-developing reflexive active environments is the humanistic interpretation of uh, our uh, construction of the world. And that is uh, something that I hope we will be able to continue uh, in the next uh, 
days. One aspect I want to emphasize is that our main paradigm here is communications. Citizens' contributions to society need more than information. They require communication. We believe this is an important distinction that this Congress wants to highlight. Messages exchanged by people are more than information bullets going from an origin to a destination through an empty space. The meaning of these messages emerge, uh, emerge from the communication media underpinning these interactions. And I think historically, these media have been hierarchies and technology controlled by the few in power. They have to offer opportunities for self-constructive, self-reflective, active environment. So this is where I see the, the link between communications and what uh, Levski has called third order cybernetics comes together very strongly. We are in the process of uh, uh, building up citizens' networks. We need to learn how to produce these net networks through het heterarchies rather than hierarchies. And in particular, we need to understand more the power of the commons. It is through these kinds of interactions that people can propose, co-create and produce social systems and construct better societies. To achieve societies of the commons as proposed by the Nobel Prize Eleanor Ostrom, we are proposing to overcome fragmentation and to learn more about how to develop holistic and socially responsible societies in the context of our current social technological development. In a, in, a, in a way, research communities are establishing one way or the other international networks, something that is enabling the exchange of research results and thus the sharing of knowledge. Nevertheless, the research itself is often constrained by national, regional, or local organizations restricting researchers to follow the limited agendas of their leaders and managers. Even with a desire to cooperate global research teams, serving so humanity are hard to establish, manage, and often difficult to finance. Thereby, in WASP 2021, we are advocating the support of global research collaboration to enable researchers, in particular young researchers, in the formation of international research teams in pursuing goals beyond these. Uh, geographical boundaries. And uh, perhaps <coughs> one aspect of our Congress is going to be a focus on crisis. COVID-19 is not only a global crisis for humanity, exposing the geopolitical weaknesses of uh, nation states to respond to the pandemic. It has also highlighted a universal crisis by exposing people's weaknesses to cooperate, share resources, and exhibit empathy in their daily behaviors. COVID-19 experiences are modifying social interactions and will profound, profoundly alter the post-COVID-19 responses to current and future crises, such as the, the crisis that we are experiencing today, climate change and equal distribution of resources, different forms of discrimination, impact of digital technologies and others. I think uh, we need to move uh, further and uh, give the opportunity to uh, uh, Vladimir to present uh, the ideas from and Igor to present their ideas. So I will uh, proceed uh, faster. And uh, I would just po point uh, that our uh, focus on these uh, uh, aspects of crisis is purposefulness. COVID-19 has convincingly shown 
that humanity lacks a strategic goal setting mechanisms, let alone mechanisms to reach collaborative purposes. Humanity has not formed adequate mechanisms for aborting its plans as they are produced, for identifying global threats, and for ensuring readiness to prevent and mitigate their effects. Systems thinking and cybernetics should provide mechanisms for the design and governance of inclusive, interlinked, purposeful systems. That is one aspect that I hope we will learn how to improve our capacity to produce purposeful, purposeful systems. And the second aspect uh, relates to reflexivity. COVID-19 pandemic has also shown that humanity lacks mechanisms to ensure adequate reflection related to the threats that have arisen, the methods of protection and neutralization of their consequences. The systems approach in cybernetics can provide numerous studies on reflexivity related to the governance of social systems. We started with Heinz von Förster uh, and uh, continued with uh, many more that uh, I must mention Vladimir Lefebvre, uh, Vladimir Levsky, Stuart Amplevy, Carl Miller, uh, Dimitri Novikov, and others. Uh, so yeah, I will just uh, proceed to the main purpose of the, the main direction of our Congress uh, during this week. I think uh, what we have in our Congress uh, on the main directions and purposes are the ones I have just described and were proposed by the initial uh, presenters. I think I want to uh, simply mention the uh, themes that are going to uh, direct our discussions and conversations. We have philosophical and methodological foundations for the development of the systems approach and cybernetics. This is uh, uh, the theme number one, where we will be focused on a world in crisis. How can cybernetics, systems thinking, and new technologies help? And there we have a number of people who will make contributions. We have a, a, a basic concern in critical systems thinking and the management of complexity. And uh, again, this uh, goes into the support of the main directions I already mentioned. Ontological cybernetics will continue uh, the main uh, sections of this theme uh, number one. Number two, uh, with theme number two, uh, will be focused on uh, interactions in society, the cybernetics of society, ecology of, uh, of, of governance. And I think uh, the three main sections here, which uh, will be discussed through the three uh, four days of the Congress is governance of pressing problem, environmental issues in the age of the Anthropocene, we will be talking about institutions, nations, and distributed organization and control, uh, which we have called the, the Westphalian paradox. And then we will continue with a, a discussion of the humanitarian uh, aspects of uh, cybernetics through culture and society and to, uh, citizenship and democracy. The third uh, theme of the, of the, of the Congress uh, will be on digital technologies and human interactions. The co-development of a hybrid reality, which has been emphasized by many of the introductions. Digital transition and smart self-organization uh, is one of the sections. And we will talk about social humanitarian, artificial intelligence, and there we have a, a big in, a discussion about artificial inte intelligence and general artificial intelligence. We will have discussions about systems modeling, analysis and decision-making and their uncertainty. And uh, uh, we will also have a very significant contribution from uh, the Institute of Control 
of the Academy of Sciences, uh, the Cybernetics and Control Sciences for Information Society with Mikhail Lupukov and the several others. So this is theme four, theme three. Theme four will be focused on transdisciplinarity of system sciences and cybernetics and developing new areas of knowledge. Uh, I think one of the themes that we will be particularly interested is redesigning education, the education system to make it more transdisciplinary. Uh, and uh, this is going to be followed by going beyond the silos in or silos in medicine and health systems, the time for systems thinking and cybernetics. That's where we will continue work that uh, started in Rome with Maria Luisa Saviano and Sergio Barile. And I think uh, we'll continue uh, with Christian Cristipino here in this Congress. And then we will be talking about aspects of uh, advancing systems economics and economic cybernetics. And that's uh, where we will be looking at the future. And finally, we will be talking about cybernetic systems and the arts, which are a, a, a embodied ped a, a pedagogies and the amplification of reflexive capacity with uh, important contributions from extreme west to extreme east. So thank you very much to all of you for uh, attending this Congress. I thank very much again to uh, Igor Perko for his work in uh, during all the preparations. And uh, simply I can say, let's have a fruitful Congress. Thank you very much, Professor Raul Espejo, for the introduction. You covered all the aspects of the Congress. So yes, congratulate you on that. But let's see, let's see maybe also the perspective of Professor Vladimir Lepsky on the Congress. Vladimir Yevgenyevich. Okay, unmute yourself. Vladimir Yevgenyevich, could you just look? Yes, uh, just a moment, just a moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have you. Так. Видно мою презентацию, Лена? Да. А? Да. Yes, we, we can see it. Okay. Uh, I'm honored to welcome uh, the start uh, of the Congress. In the short speech, I will present uh, my position on the role of the systems approach in cybernetics for the future of humanity. At present, uh, the world community moving from a unipolar to a multipolar world has approached a new global throes. Historical established uh, international political, uh, legal uh, and economic regulators do not work. The leaders of some countries uh, transnational corporations and financial uh, structures are trying to decide for everyone how to organize the life of the world community, who to call good and who is bad. As a result, traditional diplomacy, diplomacy and legal norm for regulating international relations do not work effectively. This is clearly visible in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> unique, unique of the COVID-19 pandemic is the need for the 
consolidation of all mankind of to overcome overcome it. It was not possible to organize a successful consolidation of the subject of the world. Uh, world community uh, to neutralize this pandemic. There is reason to believe that it will not be possible to organize the consolidation of the world community, even for more ser serious uh, challenges and serious to humanity. The main problem of mankind is, is the non-subjectness non-subjectness to ensure uh, its life and uh, development. There are no uh, mechanisms adequate uh, to uh, ensure the integri integrity uh, of mankind. Fuseness, uh, <coughs> fullness, reflexity, reflexi reflexivity, communication, sociality, and the ability to develop. The destruction of these mechanisms is uh, facilitated by the dominant globalistic project and the model, model of a technogenic civilization in which social values are ignored. Oi. Excuse me. Я потерял презентацию. Okay, 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 introduction. Uh, the system approach and cybernetics have a rich scientific and practical foundation for solving the most complex so technical problems. In, it is necessary to use a subject-oriented approach and philosophical and methodological uh, foundation uh, adequate to this approach. In Russia, there are uh, currently uh, such studies and uh, there are preliminary uh, result. For the real impact uh, of the development of a uh, system approach and cybernetics on world processes, it is necessary to use the positive experience of the influence of the international community of scientists on uh, the prevention of nuclear war threats. This is very useful experience in scientific diplomacy in which uh, <coughs> specialists uh, of the system approach and cybernetics took an uh, active part. Uh, <coughs> today, the threats uh, to humanity are, no, are more significant than uh, threats of nuclear war. We are responsible for the future of humanity. The Congress is attend, attended by lead, leading experts of the world scientific community. And we must realize our responsibility and mission, mission in consolidate, consolidating humanity to create, create a normal living condition and develop better uh, of the world community, and not just some countries or transnational corporation and financial financial organization. I propose to discuss two important initiatives during the Congress in plenary session and sections. First, the development of the uh, document. Manifesto on Social Cybernetics 2021, with the authorship of leading experts in the system approach in cybernetics. Manifesto on Social Cybernetics 2021. No Congress, uh, all community. 
Secondly, the creation of the International Club of Social Cybernetics with uh, personal participation of uh, 100 leading experts on this topic. Uh, the Rome Club, uh, no attention uh, with uh, problem control. Uh, this will uh, make it possible to take important step towards uh, improving the mechanism of public participation in the control and the development of mankind on the basic of modern achievement uh, of the system approach and cybernetics. A few words about uh, the uh, preparation for a Congress. Uh, but uh, uh, my friend uh, Raul uh, was uh, speak about this. Uh, uh, many thanks uh, to everyone who uh, participated in the preparation of the Congress. I wish the participants of the Congress interesting uh, communication and creative uh, collaboration. Thank you for your attention. Good luck. Thank you, Professor Lepsky. Now uh, we are almost on schedule. So if you agree, then I would like to uh, to present a very, very short insight from the manifesto we were talking about. Uh, the, manif the manifesto is on the website. And uh, please, you can read it and you can also support it. If you decide to, there is a form for that. And at the beginning, at the end of the page, there is a place to uh, comment it provide suggestions to put something in. And uh, we could see that there already are some comments which are interesting and maybe you can read it. Uh, please be free to go to the World Wask 2020 website and try to identify uh, padlets which are there for your uh, well, off record uh, unofficial communication. I'm sharing the screen here. Let's see if that actually works. Okay. Okay. Can you see this? Okay. Um, now, I would focus in one of the points uh, of manifesto, which uh, Professor Rules Bech also kindly explained in total. It's the the need for global research. Why is that? Because our research results, they actually resonate, they impact all over the globe. And even if those are local uh, research, you know, they may have really global impact. And that means that you cannot uh, only think globally think locally and act locally, you really need to think, uh, you really need to think globally before you act locally. Uh, and this is, this is important. You don't think in this connected world these days that a small solution which started, for instance, like Uber has changed the, the perspective we have on transportation throughout the world. Uh, and this should be rethinked very well. Now, the second point worth addressing uh, is that, you know, how do we conceive science? How do we conceive research? Is it, is it, oh, we have a theorem and then we can verify if it's correct? Is this science? I would introduce something else. Let's 
let's stop splitting cybernetics and systems, uh, but let's try thinking of cyber systemics, which does involve structure, which does, which does involve dynamics, and acts as a philosophy of science. And that, that will provide us with the new understanding of the meaning of research. We should rethink what we are doing. And this is, this is one, of, one of the really important research is no longer research. So cyber systemics is not a really new term. Professor Raul Espejo used it several times and I must tell you that I really liked it. It's all about identifying new perspectives to gain a more holistic understanding of what we are exploring. And currently, if we are talking about global issues, we are exploring the world. And not only thinking about that, it's also about developing paths, how to get there, how to reach. So it's not just system thinking, it's about the dynamic part of the cybernet. So this is why the cyber systemics. And I'm looking forward to open discussion whether, whether I got it right and how wrong did I get it. Now, also one of the aspects of thinking of a researcher who goes into his study room and produces knowledge is rather slow because we are limited. We cannot do it by ourselves, each of us. We need to co-produce knowledge. We need to cooperate for them, right? And that, that involves not invoking people who think the same as we do. We need to think and work with people who do not think the same as we do. And this is the paradigm. From other disciplines, from other nationalities, from other religions, from other genders, social groups, environments. Is an environment something that can play an active role in our research? It should be. And last, from other intelligences. Let's think about where we are going. And it's so easy to get in your study and do the research, but it's so hard to achieve co-producing with people who do not think the same. And this is a major challenge. So obviously we need organizational support for that. You know, there is a problem because if hierarchical organizations uh, are in place that they, they quite often, they provide boundaries to the researchers. You know, which are good in a system perspective. You know, you, you create boundaries and there you have a stable system. But if boundaries are too strong, they're forcing us, you know, to follow the agendas of the organization, which are quite often limited. So how can we get and solve the global issues if we are following the organizational agendas? And you know, there is a twist in organization. Should it be about control or about support? And quite often these uh, uh, terms are mixed up. So instead of getting support, we get control. And that does not work. If we, if we have dynamic networks of researchers working together, this cannot be successfully controlled by the organization hierarchy, hierarchies. I'm, I'm talking about bureaucracy, which fits in itself for itself and does not support research. And this is a major issue we have on all levels. So I'm coming back to the manifest. I'm coming back to the, to the fact that we are advocating support of global research 
collaboration. That would enable us the formation of international research teams. So we can pursue the goals which are beyond national, regional, or local interests. Now, is it for the researchers to claim for that? I'm afraid it is, because if we do not that, then we will just comply to the organizational boundaries, which are there and will not go forward. Uh, I would like to say that the, the part of the what 2020 is basically formed as a, an experiment to see how and where we can break the boundaries and if this is even possible. And frankly, I must admit that with a great, great uh, effort of the participants, mostly this can be done. Even though the boundaries are set, we still have the power to basically break them. Quite often, it part, it takes a lot of effort, but I think it can be done. Thank you, and yes, I'm uh, wishing all of us, uh, as Professor Espejo, as Vladimir Letri said, a very fruitful Congress where we may break some of those barriers. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any feedbacks? You can see you can see come on Igor. You don't have a clue what are you doing? Um, but if not, I'm breaking my mind. The next point is go and look in the history. Have they been breaking boundaries? Have they been developing new ideas? We will speak about two very important persons who have formed the cyber systemic environment, cyber systemic community. These are Umberto Maturana and Vladimir Alexandrovich Lefebvre. Uh, I would uh, give uh, the words to Professor uh, Raul Espejo. There are a few words on the huge man, Berto Juana. Raul, I think you're muted. Yeah, good. Uh, thank you, Igor, for giving me the Right, I think uh, I am going to share a, a file, if you allow me. Right. Well, uh, May 6 this year, Umberto Maturana, died, passed away. And uh, that was a, a significant uh, event for me. There you have the man. He was uh, a Chilean biologist, neurobiologist who developed uh, a significant amount of work uh, around topics I will mention briefly in a second, and uh, who uh, could have continued uh, contributing because his abilities were absolutely extraordinary. Perhaps the initial work uh, that uh, led me to, to, to know him was uh, his book, The Machinas y Seres Vivos, about autopoiesis and biology of cognition. That, uh, that book was published in Spanish, and there you can see that's my copy of uh, 1972. And uh, 
He, this was a book that he wrote together with uh, Francisco Varela. I think another giant of cyber systemics and uh, someone who unfortunately passed away at, in the early 2000s. Now, Umberto was not only a great scientist for me, was also a friend. I met Umberto through Stafford Beer early during the Cybersyn project in 1972. Uh, the Cybersyn project a few years back would have passed unnoticed. Uh, today, I have no, seen so much interest in it that I expect that uh, most of us uh, will be aware of it. So I will not uh, talk much about it. Uh, together with uh, Umberto, I met uh, Francisco Varela, Heinz von Thurston. Uh, and of course, I, I have to, I was already with uh, Stafford Beer. So I had this privilege of being together in Santiago, Chile uh, in 1971 with uh, Stafford Beer and then after in 72 with Umberto Maturana, Francisco Varela, Heinz von Förster. He also, Heinz von Förster was in Chile at that time. He had visited uh, the country uh, from the biological laboratory, uh, computer laboratory in Illinois. Umberto with his critical mind, uh, made over the years powerful contributions to the debate about that project, which uh, today continues to be significant and uh, something that I think I would talk a little bit more over this conference. He, at that time, he was finishing the, 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 the publication, the writing and publication of that uh, book that I already mentioned. At, uh, at the same time, he was uh, path-breaking, his path-breaking publication was uh, Autopoiesis and Cognition, the realize, re realization of the living. And that book was, uh, work that was followed by one book that is well known throughout the scientific community, the cyber systemic scientific community. Umberto and Francisco wrote The Tree of Knowledge, where they consolidated their extraordinary contribution of autopoiesis and the biology of cognition to the scientific community. I was a witness of their work towards this last book in Santiago, in its original version in Spanish, El Arbol del Conocimiento in 1981, as part of a project for the organization of American states. That was a book that they published under the support of the Organization for American States and which then was followed by the, at the beginning of the 1990s with a tree of knowledge, the biological roots of human understanding. And that's where they present in the most convivial and discursive mode, their views, which often were not eye to eye, but they were uh, talking to each other in the most uh, fruitful way. I met him many times over the years. Uh, perhaps I want to highlight that I met him in Santiago, London, and elsewhere. I want to highlight the time that uh, Bjorn Erik Dahlberg, a great Norwegian, which uh, unfortunately passed away as well, he invited him to Hydro Aluminium and, and to the Norwegian fjords in 1992. I joined the workshops that uh, Umberto ran uh, for uh, workers, workers of the uh, aluminum plants, and that was a fantastic uh, uh, observation of someone with capacity to communicate simply and 
through uh, to the people, in spite of having written quite difficult, quite difficult books and difficult papers. So I, I learned to appreciate his communicative capacity at the time. He was an extraordinarily inspiring agent of change with the capacity to transmit engage, engagingly powerful ideas. Perhaps I cannot uh, pass the fact that in 1994, he received the Chile's National Prize for Natural Sciences. He got the recognition of the country for his work in all that I have been talking about. But at the more personal level, at the more personal level, I want to just mention two of his publications that most influenced my work personally. The first one was reality, the search for objectivity or the quest for a compelling argument. He published that in the Irish Journal of Psych Psych Psychology in 1988. And what is for me particularly interest interesting is that he claimed in that publication that the most central question that humanity faces today is the question of reality. And uh, once you start to see how internet and the politicians have transformed all these processes of observing the world and making it quite clearly a, a, a source for lies. A, his claim of the central question of, uh, a, of, of objectivity seems quite well placed. But the second paper that uh, I was tremendously influential in me was uh, his uh, paper, Autopoiesis, Structural Coupling and Cognition, a history of these and other notions in the biology of cognition. He published that in, the cyber, in Cybernetics and Human Knowing in the, in the year 2002. Now, this is a, a very significant because it is there in that paper that he he explains in very precise and very clear manner the influence of communications as opposed to information, which was one of my points earlier this morning. It, is, it was clear for him that uh, we are structure determined. We are recognizing things as we, as we elaborate within ourselves the communications that produce what we understand and, uh, and do in the world. So the structural coupling and cognition uh, became a significant piece of work for my own self. Uh, perhaps I cannot pass the fact that an important occasion of my interactions with uh, Umberto was in 2014. At the time of the WASC 16, Congress in Ibagué, Colombia. In that opportunity, Wosk presented him with a Norbert Wiener Memorial Gold Medal, which he graciously accepted with a most humane and personal talk. He was so engaged in this talk that almost lost his plane to go back to Chile. So he was totally involved in communicating with the people of the Congress a fantastic opportunity for us. Here it is a photograph of uh, Umberto receiving the, the medal and uh, myself uh, thanking him for that uh, grateful, but gracious presentation. That's the medal that we gave. Uh, perhaps uh, I have to mention now that I'm doing this, that this medal has been given to very, very few people. And uh, uh, most recently, I think uh, we gave it to Matthias Malay from Slovenia. And uh, that uh, shows that in fact, uh, we appreciate very much the great contribution of uh, the, the University of Mali Maribor in all this work that uh, was done around WASC. His later work, 
uh, was in cultural biology. In 1997, he met Jimena Davila and received from her an epistemological invitation to focus on cultural biology, which he accepted and together they formed Matristica, an organization that still operates in Chile. They worked together for a couple of dec decades. In 2020, he published in Spanish the book, Emotions and Language in Education and Politics. And in 2021, not long before his death, he published with Jimena in Spanish, the reflect, la revolución reflexiva, the reflexive revolution, which in fact is a very good way for me to pass the word to uh, Vladimir Levsky to talk about Lefebvre. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Rules Beha. Now to the next giant, uh, which is uh, which has formed the cyber systemic environment, the Vladimir Lefebvre, who will be presented by Professor uh, Vladimir Lepsky. Vladimir. Okay. Okay. In this presentation, uh, I want to honor the memory of Vladimir Lefebvre, who died last year. Vladimir Lefebvre was my friend and teacher. He made a great contribution to the development of the system approach and cybernetics. The organizers of the Congress decided uh, to acknowledge uh, his contribution. My presentation is the first step. Vladimir Lefebvre uh, was a Russian and American scientist. He received the best mathematical education and developed as a scientist in the USSR. After migrating uh, to the United States, he made a contribution to the international science, but did not lose contact with the Russian scientific community. I'm happy that Vladimir Lefebvre was my teacher and friend. Vladimir Lefebvre was my boss from uh, 1966 and uh, to 1971. Then uh, there was a break in our contact until 1994, due to the spe specifics of my work. Since 1994, we have actively worked, worked uh, together and met uh, many times in the United States and Russia. The slide show his uh, monographs in English. I believe that more works were published in Russia than in English. This slide presents uh, the main uh, areas of research of Vladimir Lefebvre. The result in all uh, these fields are presented in his monographs and articles. It is important to note that the idea about the formation of second order cybernetics are similar to those of Humberto Maturana. Humberto Maturana presented a, a reflection as self-reference. <clears throat> Many positive statements of uh, famous scientists uh, can be stated uh, uh, about the contribution of Vladimir Lefebvre, Karl Popper, Anatoly Rapoport, 
Jack Adams Weber, Max Black, Stuart Ampleby, etc. Among Russian scientists, Dmitry Paspelov, Vladimir Zinchenko, Vadim Sadovsky, Vadim Petrovsky, Dmitry Novikov, etc. This slide shows the statement by Karl Popper. Uh, I met uh, with Anatoly Rapoport in Canada. Uh, he highly uh, appreciated uh, the contribution of Vladimir Lefebvre to science. In 2022, we plan uh, to discuss the contribution of Vladimir Lefebvre at related uh, scientific event, interdisciplinary uh, symposium, reflexive processes and control. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Lefebvre. Uh, and we we will introduce you one more time uh, because now we are going from the people to the concepts, right? And if this is possible, I would like to ask you to elaborate on um, the reflexivity in cybernetics, philosophical and methodological analysis. But since my my work is also to keep track of time. Uh, I think we are good. So yes, this the floor is yours one more time. Vladimir. Okay. Colleagues, my next speech will be on the topic reflexivity and cybernetics, philosophical and methodological analysis. The main purpose of my speech is to propose a classification of type of reflexivity in the context of development, cybernetics and scientific rationality. Uh, this slide present, present, presents uh, the structure of my presentation. The evolution of cybernetics is associated uh, with the increased uh, focus on reflexivity. Reflexivity was the key basis for the formation of the second order cybernetics. Heinz von Förster, Vladimir Lefebvre, Stuart Ampleby, etc. And for uh, of my interpretation of third order cybernetics, of self-developing self -developing, uh, polysubject reflexive active environments. For the philosophical and methodological analysis of reflexivity in cybernetics, we propose uh, to use modern concept uh, scientific rationality, classical, non-classical, post-non-classical, which is love stopping. It is uh, fundamentally important uh, that the evolution of cybernetics corresponds to the evolution of types of scientific rationality. I will analyze, 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 an, analyze uh, the uh, specific Specificity, specificity of reflexivity for various types of scientific rationality and cybernetics of the first, second, and uh, third order.
Various definitions of reflexivity are used in different fields of uh, universal uh, system definition of reflexivity can be as follow. Reflexivity is the ability of active systems uh, to build models of their state and behavioral, as well as uh, similar models for other systems. Vladimir Lefebvre. The role uh, of reflexivity in the formation on second order cybernetics can be illustrated on uh, the uh, cybernetics cube proposed by Vladimir Lefebvre. The plane of the cube with axis uh, is first order cybernetics. Through reflexivity, we enter the volume of the cube. This is cybernetics of the second In an autopoiesis, Humberto Maturana, reflexivity is presented as self-reference. Reference. Through uh, reflexivity, there is a connection between the ideas of Vladimir Lefebvre in, and Humberto Maturana. Three types of scientific rationality were proposed by Vyacheslav Stepin. The basis in the relationship of subject, means, and object of research. It is important to know that each next type of rationality includes the previous ones as particular paradigms. This is consistent uh, with Bohr's principle of correspondence. It is important to know that in post non classical scientific rationality, not only intra scientist values are used, but also social ones. The table shows three types of reflexive activity corresponding to the types of scientific rationality types of cybernetics and subjective paradigms of control. Personal reflexivity, communicative reflexive reflection, meta-subject reflection. In this table, you can see more detailed uh, connections uh, of reflexivity. Um, in first order cybernetics, the subject object paradigm, uh, reflexivity is not the focus of intention. An example of ignoring the reflexive activity of decision makers in the, the theory of games and research of operation. Reflexivity is stimulated in problem situations of decision makers. In second order cybernetics, reflexivity is at the center of attention, which is associated with the subject subject paradigm. The decision maker becomes only one of the person in the specific system of the reflexive relations. Communicative reflection becomes dominant. Reflexive, reflexive control is becoming uh, one of the most important reflexive, reflexive technologies. There are dozens of different reflexive technologies, double reflexive control, uh, pulsating reflection, virtual reflection, 
рефлексивы, программинг, etc. This slide presents the result of, of a reflexive analysis of uh, <coughs> three, six uh, China stratagems. This approach is to overcome manipulation and more on to cooperation. Of, uh, excuse me. A new form of reflexive activity appears uh, meta subject reflection. New types of reflexive technologies are formed on the basis of a system of ontolog ontologies of cell developing polysubject reflexive active environment. There, there is a, a lot of interesting work uh, to be done in this direction. I hope I was able to explain to you about the role of reflexivity in the development of control, control and cybernetics. Uh, this slide presents selected uh, publications in English. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you.